The worship service you can follow in the bulletin that you received on the way in. Uh, prayers, songs, texts, and so forth. Bold print is for the congregation, light print for worship leaders. We will receive communion a little later in the service um, at the, uh, a, a station outside. Uh, you can receive um, by distribution or with a small pre-sealed kit if you would prefer. And we begin our service this morning with our gathering hymn, Send Down the Fire, as printed in your bulletin. I invite you to stand with me as you're able. Send down the fire of your justice, send down the rains of your love, come send down the spirit, breathe life in your people, and we shall be people of God. Call us to be your compassion. Just the song of your love Give us hearts that sing Give us deeds that ring Make us ring with the song of your love Send down the fire of your justice Send down the rains of your love Come send down the Spirit, breathe life in your people, and we shall be people of God. Call us to learn of your mercy, teach us the way of your peace. Give us hearts that feel, give us hands that heal. Make us walk in the way of your peace. Send down the fire of your justice. Send down the rains of your love. Come send down the spirit, breathe life in your people. And we shall be people of God. All us Teach us the fire of your truth Give us righteous souls Till your justice rolls Make us burn with the fire of your truth Send down the fire of your justice Send down the rains of your love Come send down the spirit Breathe life in your people, and we shall be people of God. Call us to witness your kingdom, give us the presence of Christ. May your holy light keep us shining bright, ever shine with the presence of Christ. Send down the fire of your justice, send down the rains of your love. Come send down the spirit, breathe life in your people, and we shall be people of God. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God, our Creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all the people of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today we have a special Pentecost reading in many languages. The 
first reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Perigia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, there are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what is spoken to the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above. And signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God, the word of life. Amen. Thanks be to God. All right, I'd like to invite all the kids on up. How is everyone this morning? So today, in church, we're going to have a party. How does that sound? Yeah? Now, we're not just going to have any party, but we're going to have a birthday party. Yeah. Now, there might be people in the congregation that um, are here, and their birthdays might be really close, but we're not celebrating their birthdays. Do you know whose birthday we're celebrating today? The birthday of the church. Not just our church, but the church in general. So you're probably asking, how can we celebrate the birthday of our church, right? Kind of interesting. Well, I brought some things today to share with you to help you understand what I'm talking about in the party. So the first thing I brought today, a balloon, right? Now, right now, this balloon seems pretty flat and lifeless, there's nothing really going on with this balloon, right? Okay, so what we need to do
All right, this looks more like the balloons that you, you're used to seeing, right? It's got some air in it. All right, now I'm going to let the air out. You're probably wondering why I did that at a birthday party, right? Well, today when we're celebrating the birthday of the church, <clears throat> this is when we get to celebrate something called the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we don't see the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's just out there and we don't really know what it is. We can't really see it. But oftentimes, <clears throat> people refer to the Holy Spirit as a wind that kind of rushes through and kind of stirs up some emotions in us. So that's why we have our balloons for our birthday party today. Now, the second thing I brought, a candle. Any good birthday cake needs candles on it, right? Whether it's one or a hundred. All right. Now, what I'm not going to do right now, just because we're inside and you guys are all sitting here, but normally we light these on fire, right? And we see this beautiful flame. And if it's your birthday, you get to blow the candle out. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about the fire and what the fire represents. Oftentimes, people see, say sometimes that they see the Holy Spirit in fire and flames. And they say that these flames come and they build up this kind of warmth inside of you and it makes you kind of want to explode and do something good. So the next time you see fire, especially at a birthday party, I want you guys to think of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> All right, the third item I brought. What is any good birthday party without some presents, right? We all love to open those presents. <clears throat> but it has nothing in it. Weird, right? How would you like to open a present that had nothing in it? It might be kind of disappointing, right? But what if I were to tell you this really doesn't have nothing in it, but it has that word we've been talking about, the Holy Spirit. So, <clears throat> when we open presents, we want to think of the this day in our church that's called Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was the first gift that the church received. This Holy Spirit brings us forgiveness, truth, and new life. And you know what? The Holy Spirit still offers those same gifts to us today, just as it did back on the first Pentecost Sunday. So as we celebrate the birth of the church today, Remember that the Holy Spirit is still alive and at work in us today, just as it was in the early church. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Help us to remember that the Holy Spirit still fills the church with power today, as it did on the first day of Pentecost. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God, our creator, and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is Pentecost all about? Such a dramatic story at the beginning of the book of Acts. And by the way, before I continue with my sermon, I just want to thank all who gave that multilingual reading. Abaj Singh in Punjabi, Neela Smith in German, Susie Carlson in French, Joey Aquino in Tagalog, uh, Dick Berry in Spanish, and I did Latin, so thank you, and Mary Stewart in English. Thank you very much for bringing that to life in a powerful way. But Jesus' disciples are gathered in Jerusalem waiting for his imminent return, which he predicted, and something like a violent wind comes upon them, tongues of fire, we're not sure what that means, something, maybe one big thing, individual, we're not sure, sin on their heads, and they speak in many languages as the Spirit gave them ability, such that visitors from all surrounding regions could understand them. People they'd never seen before in languages they did not know. A remarkable story with a simple message. The good news of Jesus is to be shared with everyone. No language or cultural barrier 
is to stand in the way. With this story, the mission of the church was set. It was to go into all nations. Pantata ethne is the Greek. Into all, you hear that word ethne, ethnicities, nations, tribes, groups, peoples, etc. To share the gospel, which is exactly what it did. Missionaries went out in all directions, north, south, east, west, to carry the sacred story of Jesus with them, to baptize and to confer on all people, no matter who they are, what they look like, etc., their background, the Holy Spirit. It's a fascinating story that would take over an empire, lead to divisions, and even, sadly, in some cases, war, but was filled with much hope and healing in between with acts of love and mercy and kindness, bearing witness to the love of Christ. I sometimes wonder what it must have been like to show up in an unfamiliar town, armed with nothing but good news, and perhaps a sense of enthusiasm to share that message with the people there. What would one of those first missionaries have seen or experienced? They would have been traveling, either on foot or by boat or maybe a pack animal of some sort, on the extensive system of roads or trade routes throughout the Roman Empire or trade routes to other places, south into Africa, where the church spread into Egypt, Ethiopia, and beyond, north towards Central Asia, Russia, west into Asia Minor, as it was called, present-day Turkey, and much of the development of early Christianity happened in what we now know of as Turkey, in caves, there's cave art, the great Cappadocian fathers, uh, Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory of Nazianzen, Basil the Great. These were huge church uh, theologians, fathers of the, of the Eastern Church. And the church actually f- spread far east as well. We don't often tell or know that story. There were missionary centers as far east as India, doing missionary work into places as far east as China very early on a long time ago in the church. If you came to a new town as a missionary, you would have sought out a public place to preach, to tell your story. You may well have gone to the synagogue if there was one, a gathering place for the Jews. Or in other cases, you might have just set up shop on a street corner and shared your message publicly. But much more likely, you would have worked your connections and given yourself an opportunity to be heard by as many people as possible to share the sacred story of Jesus with those who wanted to hear it so that they would have the opportunity to come to Christ, to be baptized and become followers of Jesus themselves or not. It's hard for us to imagine a world like that when we have a church on practically every street corner, some in better shape than others, but Christianity was not the dominant religion back then. In fact, it it didn't even really exist There were lots of other religions, mystical cults mixed with philosophy, temples to all sorts of gods, and a unique faith called Judaism, which insisted on a belief in one God and one God alone. It was viewed with respect by the Roman Empire, for one. People of all faiths had to offer incense to the genius of Caesar, but not the Jews. They knew that was against their faith, and they were not going to yield and it wasn't worth the struggle and the battle, they just let it go. Partly also because they had respect for these ancient Hebrews, their prophets, their wisdom, their law, all that they stood for. Now a small band of Jews were running around saying the Messiah had come and his name was Jesus of Nazareth. The life he lived, the message he preached, the people he healed, the way he changed lives could change your life too. And boy, did it make a difference. The surprise was that his messiahship was vouched for by crucifixion, a particularly brutal form of execution in the Roman Empire, and resurrection. He rose again on the third day, something no one expected for the messiah. He found it in the prophet Isaiah and a few other places. But it was just enough of a surprise, I suppose, to be compelling. Through belief in Jesus' life, 
and baptism into his death and resurrection, those who heard this message of good news could receive the Holy Spirit and have life in his name. And while many were puzzled at this message, others accepted it and became part of the Jesus movement. Paul experienced this when he preached at the Areopagus in Athens in Greece, as recorded in Acts 17. Recall that Paul himself had converted to Christianity. He'd been an ardent opponent, Saul of Tarsus, persecuted the Christians until he was knocked from his horse by a light and heard, I preached about this a few weeks ago, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He's blinded and he goes into town, scales fall from his eyes, and he sees. Now he's a Christian and he's sharing his story so others can have that same experience. I noticed how religious you are, people of Athens. You have a tomb to an unknown God. He connects with them. And he tells them, the God you think you don't know is revealed in this man I'm telling you about, Jesus Christ. And a fascinating result, a third of the listeners accept the message and are baptized and become Christians. A third say, yeah, no, I don't think so. And walk away and say, nice meeting you, Paul, but you can get lost as far as I'm concerned. Another third have a really interesting reaction. Hmm, that's interesting. We'd love to hear more about that sometime. Can you come back later and tell us some more? Bye. Fascinating. They went away without making any commitment. I would imagine that experience of Paul was probably common for a lot of missionaries as they went out all nations to spread good news. You can't bat a thousand. Hey, and 333 ain't bad. Am I right, baseball fans? Not everyone will accept the message of good news. That's okay. But it doesn't mean the church is relieved of its duty to keep trying. And what is the work? It's to translate that message into those other languages, in, in cultures, into which the places where the disciples went. And that starts by listening. You cannot translate if you don't understand your people and you cannot understand your people if you do not listen, and you cannot listen if you do not care. God gave us, as a friend of mine said years ago, a colleague, two ears and one mouth. That's a lesson I constantly have to remind myself about. Preachers, you know... We live in strange and interesting times, dear friends. There are all kinds of tensions and difficulties people are suffering under. Perhaps it would benefit us simply to know who we are and whose we are. And to remember that we first receive that message of good news, grasp it, and share it with others. Our work as God's people is to listen to and understand those other people to whom God sends us. To try to decipher their language, to have some sensitivity for their way of looking at the world so we can share good news with them. They may or may not accept it, but we do not love them any less, no matter what. And we don't have to blame ourselves if they do not accept it, nor take credit if they do. In the end, it's not about us. It's about what God has done for us through Christ Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can rest confidently in that. As I mentioned earlier, we've just completed our synod assembly. The synod is all the Lutheran, ELC Lutheran congregations in Northern California and Northern Nevada. Ours is called the Sierra Pacific Synod. This was a difficult one. And to, not to say too much, but our synod has dealt with some serious challenges, dear friends, in the last few months, year or so, including accusations of racism as part of the dismissal of a pastor of color in this synod, tensions and disagreements about our bishop, Megan Rohrer, the first ever to serve not as a white man 
and the first ever trans bishop in the history of the Lutheran church, you can see a lot of stuff. Those issues weren't necessarily resolved, and it was a somber mood among those who participated. We'll hear a word later from John and Jenny, as I mentioned. The sermon during the closing worship, though, by Pastor Christian Chavaria Ayala of El Salvador, who was just wonderful, called for all of us to be more rooted in God's love and reconciliation, to ask for and offer forgiveness, sincerely and without resentment. In person, not online, that's not the same, and with kindness and compassion, just as God forgave us through Christ. I'm quite sure those first missionaries got things wrong and made plenty of mistakes. Christian history is littered with examples of God's people very imperfectly attempting to be stewards of God's saving message of grace. Yet when they went out into all nations, it was Christ's message of compassion, kindness, and love that guided and sustained them and that guides and sustains us as well. As we seek to be church, and as we welcome five new members today, joyfully, on this birthday of the church, may we be faithful to that message, and may the Spirit continue to guide, inspire, and uplift us, for Christ's sake. Amen. I you to stand with me as you're able for our hymn of the day. Just as I am. Please be seated. I'd like to invite, invite forward our new members to make a semicircle right here, facing the congregation, kind of behind the microphone, if you don't mind, make perfect. And I'm gonna stand right here. I'd like to introduce to you these five new members of our congregation. This is such a joy. We have Whit Ashbrook and Nancy Mall. 
Um, we have Will Roth, and we have Bud and Pam uh, Noeen, and, um, <laughs> that are joining our congregation today. They've been through a new member class with me, and we will have what's called affirmation of baptism right now. Y'all ready? <laughs> okay, we'll walk you through that. You have your, does everyone have a bulletin? Do you have your bulletin, yeah. Bud? It's right there. Right there. Can I, can I give it to you? Is that okay? There you go. Perfect. Just follow along. And our congregation presidents can going to present them all, but I'll, first I'll have a couple words. Dear friends, so this is on page three of your bulletin, affirmation of baptism. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself. Enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. So I ask you, dear friends and fellow travelers with us as disciples of Jesus, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, please answer all together, the five of you together, I renounce them. And we'll confess together our faith in the words of the, of the Apostles' Creed as a congregation. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Dear friends, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, please answer together. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God at LCI, do you promise to support these fellow Christians and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in these new members and fellow disciples of Jesus the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Yay. All right, folks, well, we're going to continue with our prayers, but please greet our new members after the service when you have a chance and welcome them warmly into our congregation. Thank you. You can go back to your seats now. I invite you to stand as you're able as we come before God in prayer. God of inspiration. Send your spirit to us as you did to your disciples. 
Help us to share your word in ways that others can hear and understand. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mystery, help us to have faith in you even when we do not understand how you work in the world. Strengthen our faith with the knowledge that you join in that you join us both in our suffering and joy, and that you never abandon us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for those in special needs in our congregation and beyond. We lift up our sister in Christ, Pat Wheeler, battling cancer. For all who are sick and in need, we pray at this time in this difficult season for our Bishop Megan Rohr, our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, our Sierra Pacific Synod, our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America as a denomination, for victims of racism and abuse, that all would commit themselves to Christ's way of justice and peace. And we lift up those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God, we pray for the families in Uvalde, Texas, with the senseless murders of their children. And I pray, dear God, that in our country, we will do something to resolve the senseless murders of our children and people who are merely shopping in grocery stores. We pray that something can be done to stop this slaughter of innocents. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who mourn, to all who have lost their lives to COVID-19 and those who mourn them in this difficult time. We pray for the family and friends of Todd Trish, who died tragically last week. We give them comfort, Lord, and resurrection hope all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries in the coming week. For Bob Wilsey celebrating a birthday and for Peter and Marilyn Moyle celebrating an anniversary. Bless them in the next year as they continue to be a blessing to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our God of peace, we have seen the violence and cruelty of the world and come to you burdened with sadness, anger, pain, and fear. Give us your peace and send us back into the world ready to act as your loving hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Please be seated as we honor the Lord with our offering. Okay.
Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. From placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters, you called to the deep, and you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep, and over the you called to each thing Awake from your slumbers And rise on your wings Spirit, spirit of gentleness Blow through the wilderness Calling and free Sadness, wind, wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, and you goaded your people with the law and the land. And when they were blinded with idols and lies then you spoke through your prophets to open their eyes spirit spirit of gentleness blow through the wilderness calling and free Blastedness, wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill. Then you whispered in silence, the whole world was still. Call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow. All the captives dream dreams, the women see visions, a men.
us pray, gracious God. We offer with, with joy, joy and thanksgiving, thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of the one who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as you're able as we prepare to receive the Holy Sacrament of Communion. As Christ's people went out to spread good news, they brought with them one practice. Uh, the Eucharist at this holy meal and a holy table where Christ's presence was always there. And we remember with Christians throughout the ages that in the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it for the remembrance of me. Gathered by the Spirit into one body, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all is ready. Please be seated. I invite you to come forward at a station outside. You can receive by distribution or with a small pre-sealed kit. Um, and all are welcome to receive Holy Communion. Uh, Christ is, we trust that Christ is truly present here to transform our lives by the power of the Spirit. So please feel free to come forward, cycle out, and then back in. If you'd prefer not to come, that's perfectly fine, but you are welcome.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we have a truly special event. It's a, our senior quilt ceremony. Lindsay Burns, our youth, youth and family minister, has brought this to us. And uh, let her take over, if she's so game, so inclined. Do you need, let me give you a hand. I think I need mine, probably. You do, perfect. All right, we'd like to uh, invite up our graduating seniors and their families. I'm going to have you guys stand here ish with your facing the congregation. Oh, this is actually yours. Ready? So I, I'm a parent and the pastor, so I guess I have to bear <laughs> both rules. This is definitely going to be a hard one to get ah! through today. Okay, pray for me, y'all. <laughs> Parents, in Christian love, you brought your children to the font for holy baptism. At that time, you promised to bring them to the services in God's house, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. We, as a community of faith, have worked with you, laughed with you, commiserated with you, and shared in the faith lives of your children. Graduates, at your confirmation, you made public profession of your faith and affirmed your intention to continue in your growth as a disciple of Jesus Christ. We, as a community of faith, have watched you grow in years in faith. We have delighted in your presence among us, and in your service to this community and God's people. This morning we mark this important time in your life, your graduation from high school, and the beginning of a new phase of your journey. I ask the congregation, will you continue to support Kay, Jet, and Ivan in their future endeavors, and will you pray for them and for their parents, siblings, and families as they live into this new way of being? We will. We will. Parents, will you continue to pray for your children, to support and lift them up, to encourage and advise them? If so, please say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. <laughs> Dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Oh, hold on. We forgot something. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I knew Graduate. I'd screw something up. Will you continue to live in the promises God made with you and the Holy Spirit? and at confirmation, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Jesus Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, please answer, we will with the help of God. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, there was a time when you were held and comforted in the arms of your parents. They cuddled you and wrapped you in a blanket to keep you warm, safe, and secure. Soon you will be leaving your family and this community of faith. As you go into the world, may this quote be a reminder of the love of your parents and the love of the people at Lutheran Church of the Incarnation.
Yes, please. It's fine. Nice. <laughs> Good job, sis. <laughs> we had intended to be outside with a little bit more space. Okay, so parents, um, I'm going to ask you one at a time. So we'll start with Kay's parents first <coughs> to read the next section. You ready? We come to... Yeah, right. Okay, we come today before God and this faith community to give thanks for you. Through you, we have experienced God's love, joy, love, and forgiveness. You have given deeper meaning to our lives. Wherever you go, whatever you do, our love goes with you. May this quilt remind you of the warmth of our love, the care of Lutheran Church of the Incarnation, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. When you feel lonely or have doubts, wrap up in this quilt and know that you are being prayed for and that you are never alone. All right, Heather, it's your turn. I come today before God and his faith community to give thanks to you. Through you, I have experienced God's joy, love, and forgiveness. You have given deeper meaning to my life. Wherever you go, whatever you do, my love goes with you. May this quote remind you of the warmth of my love, the care of Lutheran Church of the Incarnation, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. When you feel lonely or have doubts, wrap up in this quilt to know that you are being prayed for and that you are never alone. Okay, parents and graduates, you're going to switch places. And graduates, you're going to wrap those quilts around your parents. Oh, boy. And Kay, we'll start with you. Come today before God and this faith community to give thanks for you. You have given of your heart and of your home. You love me and care for me, even when it is difficult. I thank you for your love, patience, generosity, courage, and wisdom. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I will always be your child, and you will always have my love. I thank God for blessing me with you. Ivan? I come today before God and his faith community to give thanks to you. You have given of your heart and of your soul. You love me and care for me, even when it is difficult. I thank you for your love, patience, generosity, courage, and wisdom. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I will always be your child, and you will always have my love. I thank God for blessing me with you. Okay. I come today before God. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Thanks, everyone. Congratulations to our graduates. And just a quick word of thanks to our amazing quilters um, and these amazing quilts that you made. Oh, yeah, if you guys could sh um, kind of display them so that everyone can see them. If the quilting ladies wouldn't mind standing so we can uh, honor them, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, I want to say a word of thank you to Lori Carter, who's uh, playing piano for us today. Thank you, Lori. Um, so the congregation knows Jeff Schultz, our director of music and worship, is, uh, had knee surgery this past week. He had, it was turned out to be a little bit more than he expected, but in a way it's a good thing because there's some cartilage in his knee that they were able to remove. They think it's probably long-term going to be better for him, but he wasn't able to be with us today. And really appreciate you stepping in and filling in. Lori, it was wonderful. It's very, very great. Appreciate that. Um, there will be a um, party to send off our own Michelle Doolittle on June 19th. So just keep that in mind. She's our cantor that we've had. She's very gifted and talented. She is leaving to move to Germany later this summer. But um, it is Father's Day, but that's the plan is to have a goodbye celebration for her. Um, I'm going to, did you have an announcement? You did, please. And then we have a special announcement about Synod Assembly. So. so today is a big day. We had a new member welcome. We had our graduation uh, ceremony for our seniors. After, we will have our Sunday oh, school course. celebration for all of our Sunday school kids. But it is also our time to say thank you and to appreciate our Sunday school teachers. You guys have given of yourselves <coughs> and your time, not only on Sunday mornings, but your time at home when you're with your families preparing these Sunday school lessons. So we just wanted to say thank you and give you a little something. So if you could stand as I say your name and Ethan's gonna deliver something to you, that would be fantastic. Starting with Suzanne, who's our Sunday school coordinator and helps with curriculum and scheduling everything. All right, and second, Sue Fitzgerald, if you'll stand. All right, next is Travis Burns. Thank you. <laughs> and we have Jenny Fortuna, who's also our learning chair. <laughs> and last, Laura Kramer, who couldn't be here today, but we will make sure we get her hers in the mail. So thank you again, teachers, for giving of your time every single week. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to invite John Fortuna up to share a few words about our Synod Assembly, which as I mentioned earlier, and Jenny as well, <laughs> John and Jenny, um, who were at Synod Assembly, which was in uh, Sparks, Nevada, Re Sparks, Reno, Nevada, this uh, from June 2nd to 4th. I think so. Is that on? Yeah, it's, just stand really close. Uh, hi, so uh, for those of you that might not know us, this is Jenny, uh, my name's John. We attended the Synod Assembly that uh, Pastor Dan has mentioned a couple times uh, this morning. I don't want to say uh, too much and certainly not going to provide a whole lot of detail. I would just reiterate something that uh, the pastor had said earlier. 
which is that the, um, the church is, is hurting and there's a lot of sort of brokenness, uh, particularly within our synod, the Sierra Pacific Synod. Um, the one thing that I, there's a lot of people that have just been hurt. There's people that are kind of living in fear as a function of a lot of things that have gone on over the past year or so. Sorry, closer, closer, yeah. closer, closer. All right, yeah. Uh, so the one thing that I did wanna let everyone know about is that there was a vote, um, there was debate for about two full days um, over whether or not our newly elected bishop in the synod, uh, Bishop Rohr, uh, whether or not they should remain in the position of bishop. And after about two days, we finally had a vote, and the vote, while it was uh, a majority of the vote, was in favor of Bishop Rohr resigning, or if the bishop was not willing to do that, to start a process that would lead to the bishop's removal. A majority of the votes cast were in favor of that, but it did not reach the two-thirds threshold it, um, to pass. So that did not happen. Uh, the bishop will remain uh, in their position. But I would just ask for everyone to really pray for a lot of healing within the church as a whole, uh, within the synod uh, in particular, uh, because there's just a lot of distrust and concern over reprisals and just a, a, a lot of difficulty. It was really nice actually to be here, uh, here in church uh, together <laughs> this morning. It was a lot different than the last couple of days, I think, at least, at least for me. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to mention, and I know I'm on a time limit, um, is that uh, one of our own, especially in light of the, yeah. the, what we just had with uh, our graduating seniors, one of our own, Catherine Slaybaugh, is on staff at the Synod, and she was a part of sort of making the assembly uh, sort of happen, working overtime uh, for, uh, for the past couple of days, and I'm sure a whole year prior to that. Uh, this was really difficult on her. So just as uh, we saw, you know, we should continue to pray for our graduating seniors when they leave, um, I would encourage you to uh, do that, <laughs> and do that in particular, not just for the Synod, but do that for Catherine. I think that this was really difficult uh, for her, as it was for lots of people that were there. So if you wanted any other details or anything, you could talk to, to Jenny, myself, Pastor Dane. Okay, we're, we're not going to do Q&A right now, but I, what I, what I, I'm sorry to cut in, but I, what I would say, um, I, I am available to answer questions anytime, and I don't want to cut off, this is part of the problem, is pe pe that people are not feeling that it's a good communication. We need to do that, and we will. You can talk to Jenny and I as well, and we can give you as much detail as we have available. Thank you. Burn? <laughs> Yes. Within the Sierra Pacific Center. So I, I just want to make sure that there's a positive note on things that this assembly did. There, was, there were a couple of resolutions that were passed. And uh, yeah. Pastor Byrne, you make reference to one of those resolutions that actually did, uh, did pass and that we did talk about. So yeah, Correct. thank you for that. Paul. Yes, Paul. Sure, that's agreed. Idea. Agreed. We 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 wanted to do this to give, to let Jenny and John share their experience. And what I'll tell you is, right after the service today, I can't stay for three hours. If you have brief questions, I can share the information I have. But we will. We do need to set up more of a forum, to make sure that there's a chance for people to to have their questions answered and to share. Because we the last thing we want to do is stifle communication. That's really not. So thank you for sharing that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, John and Jenny. Just, can we have a prayer? Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for this church, and we know it's difficult sometimes to be together as church. 
We pray for Bishop Megan. We pray for Catherine Slaybaugh, Tom and Karen, who are there as well, Catherine's parents, and for all who work so hard for the sake of this synod. Lord, we know people's intentions, generally speaking, are good, and we know that we are also caught in a web of sin, and we make mistakes, and we get it wrong. We pray that your spirit would lead and guide us as your people to find our center always in you. Bless this church and bless its people that we would be guided towards the gospel always. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So, <laughs> um, that's a little bit about our life together. Uh, is Carol, did you have an announcement or you didn't, you didn't pop with those? Okay, okay. Once again, a welcome, a heart, a hearty, <laughs> interesting, but hearty welcome to our newcomers to the church. It's so wonderful to have you with us. And uh, there will be um, um, something happening after the service today to say goodbye to our Sunday school folks. Yeah, we'll meet in here. And we'll meet in here. Wonderful. Okay, <clears throat> I invite you to stand as you're able for the benediction and our sending him. Dear friends, Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abound in thanksgiving. And the blessing of the holy be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. To be your presence is our mission.